This is a video to show you how to find the max and the min on a TI-84 Plus or TI-83 calculators. Um, as you can see I'm in Y equals, I'm in function mode uh, which is right here, FUNC. Um, so if you go to your mode and you kind of you can put it in radians, it doesn't really matter for this. Um, but if you have everything on the left side, you should be all set. Um, another issue people usually have is these plots may be activated. For example, if you see it highlighted in black like that, or bolded up like that, if you go up to that and press enter, it'll turn the plot off, and that might eliminate some of your graphing errors that you've been having. So really could work with any equation. Um, I'm going to use this one. If you want to try it along with me, you probably should use the same one, so we should get the same values. Uh, I have x cubed minus 5x squared plus 3x minus 2. So we could just go ahead and press graph and hope that we can see our picture. Now we can see most of it. Um, you can tell that there's a little piece down at the bottom of that uh, right around here that we can't see so I could adjust my screen. Now a lot of the times if you just press zoom and go to 6, that's your standard window, it's going to show you from negative 10 to 10 uh, both X and Y. And again I didn't see, I don't get down as low as I need to. So I'm really looking for uh, maxes and mins here. So I'm going to look at this point up here and that point down there. So all this stuff up here doesn't really matter all that much. So I'm going to change my window, especially now that I know where I'm supposed to look, um, to from negative, I think negative 15 might work, to zero. Okay. Now I can see both the local max here and the local min there and I'm ready to solve them. The process for finding this, those two points is almost identical. Okay, I'm going to change my window just a little bit because that just doesn't seem all that great to me. Alright, so we're going to do a lot of stuff right in the calculate menu, so second trace will get me to calculate. Um, if I wanted to find out what the value was at a certain point, I could just type in 3. And at 3, boy, did I just nail the minimum? <laughs> I think I might have. Uh, at 3, it's negative 11. So let's just go back into the trace menu, the calculate menu, and find out if x equals 3 is the minimum. Okay. It looks like it might be. So what the calculator is asking us for is a point that is to the left of that minimum point. So I'm going to take that cursor and move it to the left. You can see that little cursor sliding along the graph. Is that to the left of the point where I think it's the minimum? Yes. So I'm going to press enter. A little arrow shows up above it denoting my left bound. It's asking for a right bound. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to scroll to the right. I get past my minimum point. It starts coming back up the graph. As long as I'm to the left of it, I'll be fine. Press enter. It's going to give me a guess. Don't worry about that too much. Again, notice that there are two arrows now. One left and one right of my point. Press enter. And you can see that there's a lot of decimals there and a 1-4 at the end. You have to understand that the calculator isn't calculating the exact number, it is estimating. So it's going to take those two points and just bounce back and forth and try to find a point between those two values that you set that gets close to the minimum point. And it will find, it will, it will compare two numbers and then finally say, okay, that's close enough. So what we can assume is that is equal to three. Once you learn some tricks in calculus, you'll actually learn how to find those points without a calculator. So there's the minimum. The maximum, same exact deal, except in, this, in the trace menu or the calculate menu, you're going to run maximum. Okay, and I'm going to show you a little trick here. I'm going to pick a point that I know is to the left of that minimum. And it looks like if I picked negative 1, that would be over here, down in the bottom. So I'm going to type in negative 1. I'm confident that is to the left 
of that maximum point. And then I'm going to go to the, the right of it, like maybe at 2. I can type in 2, press Enter. I find that's much more efficient than scrolling over. Okay, It kind of helps to know that the x-axis is going by 1s. Uh, if you don't know what it's going by, then that's kind of a tougher trick to do. Then the guess doesn't really matter. Press Enter one more time. And it looks like that might be at one-third. So, again, we're using technology, uh, not as good as using the calculus techniques to find that point, but at this point it's what we have. So that would be your lesson on finding the max and mins on a calculator.